Okay, now we're going to go into Genesis and identify the lost tribes or sheep of Israel. Who are they? We're going into the beginning. Let's go to Genesis 49 and 1. Genesis 49 and 1. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. He says, Come on. Gather together at my bed. Jacob is the father of the Israelites. His name was turned to Israel when he wrestled with an angel. So in old times, or in biblical times, before the father dies, he hand down the blessing and the future of what will befall the children. So he called his children together before he passed and says, Come, my sons. I will show you what will befall you in the last days. Now we're in the last days. So he was not talking about those children per se, but the seed of his children. What would be the condition of your children in the last days? This is how we can identify who the lost sheep are according to bloodline. Read. Verse 2. Gather yourselves together and hear ye sons of Jacob. And hearken unto Israel your father. Israel your father. Who are the children of Israel? Read. Reuben, thou art my firstborn. Reuben was the firstborn. Now usually the firstborn inherits or, or, or he's the heir or the heir of the father. He inherits all the blessings. But what happened to Reuben? Read. Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. The, excell the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. Read. Unstable as water, thou shalt not excel, because thou wentest up to thy father's bed, then defilest thou it. He went up to my couch. He slept with his, his, uh, his father's maid, Bilhah, and because of that he lost the the promise of the firstborn. But he still had excellency and dignity. When you go into this book, I have a book here that you cannot get because it's out of print now. By Ronald Sanders called Lost Tribes and the Promised Lands. It lets you know when the Spaniards and some of the Jewish, yes Jewish, came over to the Americas when the Indians were here that Reuben in Florida identified themselves as a tribe of Reuben. Now this was before Reuben lost their identity. And Reuben also identified another tribe, the tribe of Ephraim. I'm going to read a passage out of here, the lost tribes in the promised land. And this guy, Ronald Sanders, he actually went into the study trying to debunk the fact that the Indians here in the Americas, he was trying to, to, to uh, debunk the fact that they are Israel. He tried to prove that they, were, they, they weren't Israelites. And through his research, uh, going into their camp, uh, uh, grave grounds, going into the history, he found out the contrary. All right? And he took historical documents to put together this book. There's a passage when Montezinos came over here to the Americas, and I'm going to read it. It says, those Indians, he told himself, they are Hebrews. Pondering this thought incredulously, and yet with growing conviction, he resolved that if he ever was released, he would seek out the Indian Francisco and try to learn the truth. So Montezinos was arrested and he found out that, listen, these guys may be the Israelites. So when I get loose, I'm going to figure this story out. So he came over here and says, it says, Montezinos' story unclear as to the circumstances of his incarceration is equally unclear as to those of his release. But, re but released he was... And he immediately went to Francisco. Now, Francisco was an Indian. Revealing himself as a Jew. Montezinos proclaimed his conviction that Francisco's hidden people were of the same race as he. 
Would Francisco lead him to them? The two men were soon back in the rugged mountains in which Francisco had made his initial revelation. Marching relentlessly for a week before they finally came to a halt. It was a Saturday. That's the Sabbath. Montezinos makes a point of telling us. And they had come to a river larger than the Diero. And their echoes of the, the, the Sabbatian and all of this. Here, Francisco announced, is where your brothers will be seen. Waving a banner high in the air, the Indian guide soon was greeted by a puff of smoke. The smoke signals that the Indians use here. Far beyond the other banks of the river, a response of his signal. The two men waited. Eventually, a canoe appeared, bearing three men and a woman, all of them Indians, to the place where Francisco and Montezinos were standing at the water's edge. So they communicated a signal to say, come on down. They, the Indians got in the canoe and made themselves known. The woman got off and spoke to Francisco in the Indian tongue that Montezinos could not understand, although he could perceive that he was being identified in the conversation. She then turned to her mate companions to explain the situation. Upon hearing her words, they rose and went over to Montezinos and to his utter astonishment said, Shema Yasha Allah, Allah Hayanawa, here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. They had recited in Hebrew the fundamental credo of Judaism. So when they came over here, the Indians were still speaking the Hebrew language. And we're going to show it, and he's going to pan it in. I'm going to show you. A brief conversation then ensued in their common ancestral tongue. According to Montezinos, whose fluency in it is almost perplexing to the reader of his narrative as it is that of the three mysterious new companions, they told him that they were themselves of the tribe of Reuben, the same tribe we're reading of in Genesis the 49th chapter, finding the lost tribes. So we know that the tribe of Reuben is a Seminole Indians. Also there's a residue in, in Australia, because it says they would not excel. You have the Aborigines or the uh, indigenous people of Australia who are living in very subservient uh, uh, lifestyles at this point. So they also are part of Reuben in Australia. And that the tribe of Joseph lived on an island nearby. So not only did Reuben know who he was, he was identifying that Ephraim, the son of Joseph, was on an island nearby. Now we have identified the first tribe, Reuben, the firstborn. Seminole Indians and the, uh, the Indian tribes or the Aborigines of Australia. Let's go back to Genesis 49 and read the third and fourth verse again. Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity, and the excellency of power, unstable as water. And it says the excellency of my power. They are the only Indian tribes that didn't make a peace treaty with the Europeans that came over here because they had too much dignity to sign a peace treaty. And mind you, every peace treaty the Indians signed anyway was broken. So they had enough dignity to say, listen, I'm not signing no peace treaty. They're unstable as water. Read on. Thou shalt not excel because thou wentest up to thy father's bed. So Reuben would never come to...